We all know some version of Darwin's interpretation of the finches of the Galapagos Islands. We know he observed and categorized different variations of birds that he believed originated from the same species. He later developed the idea of survival of the fittest, the success and replication of particular variations that best suited their specific environment. It is perhaps the simple logic of this theory that allowed it to gain wide public understanding. These days, we also better understand the genetic basis of this process and the role DNA mutations and their survival through the characteristics they provide for all animals. But do we understand how these simple principles apply in a different context? Like for example, why the interaction between these evolutionary mechanisms and insecticides creates such complex problems for us? Let's apply Darwin's evolutionary principles to a problem that directly affects billions of people, mosquitoes. This is ASU. Insecticide resistance is an evolutionary problem at its core. Our challenge is to understand how mosquitoes that are resistant to insecticides spread and proliferate. Evolution is the change in allele frequencies over time. Insecticide resistance evolves through adaptive evolution by natural selection. We will break this process down in two main components, mutations and selection. Mutations are the fuel of evolution. Without mutations, there is no variation. And without variation, there can be no natural selection. Mutations occur, by and large, randomly in the genome as a result of errors in replication or repair. These mutations are most often harmful or at best neutral, but sometimes they have a beneficial effect, such as a mutation that confers resistance to insecticides for a mosquito. In any given population of mosquitoes, there will be a range of susceptibilities to a given insecticide. Such mutations could be single nucleotide changes in a specific gene, but they could also be larger changes, such as gene duplications or deletions. Mutations are extremely rare events, with estimates being as low as one in a hundred million in any given location in the genome. So you might wonder why resistance could be such a problem if mutations are so rare. Well, there are many mosquitoes in the population, and these mosquitoes have a relatively short generation time. So compare it to your chance of winning the lottery. If you just buy one ticket, that chance is extremely low. However, if you buy hundreds of thousands of tickets every month, and that's about the generation time of a mosquito, your chances will go way up. Natural selection results from a process whereby organisms which are better adapted to their environment tend to survive at higher rates and produce more offspring. As a result, the next generation will contain more individuals descending from those better adapted parents. Over generations, you can observe certain phenotype and therefore its associated alleles increase in frequency in the population. To make this more concrete, let's imagine two mosquitoes. One that carries the resistance alleles and the other that carries the wild type susceptible alleles. Both mosquitoes land on a mosquito net for their first blood meal. The resistant mosquito successfully feeds through the net and flies to the wall to digest the blood. The susceptible mosquito dies within minutes of touching the insecticide treated bed net. The resistant mosquito lays her eggs a few days later, leading to a hundred resistant offspring. Now the susceptible mosquito was never able to have any offspring. As you can see in this simple scenario, the frequency of resistance rapidly increased within one generation. However, the story is not always this simple. First, resistance is not always perfect, and mosquitoes carrying a resistance allele could still be impacted by the insecticide. Second, carrying a resistance allele doesn't come without its cost. For instance, it has been shown that resistant mosquitoes could produce less offspring, have lower mating success, or have less energetic reserves. And these fitness costs could be the result of the mutation that impact the normal function of the gene or as a result of an upregulation of resistance-associated enzymes. 
and these are costly to overproduce. This is what we call a fitness trade-off. Resistance is beneficial when insecticides are around, but it could lead to a lower fitness in the absence of insecticides. It is hypothesized that mosquitoes may evolve compensatory mutations that limit these fitness costs. We observe this in other organisms, such as antibiotic-resistant bacteria, but such evidence in insects is scarce, and whether this occurs for mosquitoes is still an outstanding question. Taking all this together, whether insecticide resistance evolves depends on how big the fitness cost is and how many mosquitoes are exposed to the insecticides. The more mosquitoes are exposed and the lower the fitness cost, the faster the spread of resistance. Charles Darwin was definitely not thinking about mosquitoes when he developed his early work in understanding evolutionary change. Yet, this is now arguably one of the most crucial areas of understanding for humankind. Analyzing how insects and bacteria respond, change and adapt to the agrochemical and pharmaceutical obstacles we put in their way is critical for the future of our species. Darwin started the process, but it is up to us to keep adding the knowledge. This was ASU. Thanks for watching.